So, so today we're going to talk about creating impressive resumes because that's something you're going to need, right, for your job search, your internship search. Even if you're applying to graduate school, a lot of times you need a resume. Um, so that's what we are going to talk about today. So when I present to um, students or um, just folks maybe I, I don't know before, I haven't met yet, um, I usually try to just go over very briefly some community agreements just so we're kind of all on the same page. So definitely participate. You can ask questions. You can use the chat. You um, can um, raise your hand, those kinds of things. I'm also seeing in the chat somebody asks, yes. So the slides will get sent to you. Also, we will send the recording to, it might take us a day or two, so just be patient, but you will definitely get the slides in the recording by the end of the week, so that's a great question. Um, definitely, you know, I know a lot about career-related things, but you guys know a lot about a lot of other things as well. Um, so please, you know, share your wisdom and share your knowledge and ask questions. Um, so excited to hear from all of you all. And if, you know, another student or an alum or whatever, somebody makes a suggestion, please try to be open to their suggestions, you know, try to roll around your head, maybe see if it would work for you. Um, so, you know, that's important. And I have a great sense of humor. And I think you'll see that reflected throughout the slides. And it's, if you have a good sense of humor, that's great. Um, please just be respectful of myself, of each other, um, just so we can have a really good workshop together and hopefully again, learn from each other, all that great stuff. So hopefully this stuff sounds okay to you all. If not, let me know, we can make some adjustments or if you have like a suggestion or whatever, um, let me know. Um, so we are going to keep on trucking. Okay. So I just want to give you kind of a, a quick sneak peek of what we're going to talk about today. And the first thing we're going to talk about are all the really great resources at UIC that you can access as a student. So excited to talk to you about that. We're going to talk a little bit about the purpose of resumes, how to tailor your resume to a specific um, position, which is really important. And we'll talk more about why that's so important. We're going to talk about something called an applicant tracking system, or people call them ATSs. We'll talk about that. Um, we're going to talk about some resume do's and don'ts. You guys are actually going to get a chance to review some resumes today. We're going to practice a little bit about how do you write those accomplishment statements. Those are the bullet points that go on your resume. Um, so we have a little bit of practicing with that. And then I'm going to try to really try hard to leave some time for Q&A. And also, we do have a survey that we're going to ask you to fill out. I promise you, you can do it in less than 30 seconds if you want. You could do it longer. Um, but the, the surveys are actually really helpful for us. It helps us figure out what topics students want to talk about. It helps us know, hey, this workshop is great. Or like, hey, this workshop was not so great. And here's why. Um, so I know it's annoying to fill out surveys. This one is extremely short. I think it's less than five questions. You can do it pretty quick. Um, so I will leave you that. I'll give you some time at the end and the link and ask you to complete the survey. So this is our plan for this afternoon. And um, like I said, we, we have a lot of great things to talk about. Really excited, you know, that you all are here and, and please ask questions. Um, this is this is your workshop for sure. Okay. So, um, like I said, there are a lot of great resources at UIC. Tan and I both work in the Career Services Office. So we are the general kind of the Career Services Office that covers all students and alumni. Um, and I, I'm gonna, in the next slide, I'll tell you about some of the colleges also have their own career office and they're wonderful. So I'll tell you about that. And just so that way, if your college has a career office, we want to make sure that you're connecting with the career office in your college. But at UIC, um, I have to update this slide, but at UIC, you can meet with career advisors like myself and like Tan in three different ways. You can meet with us in person in our office, which is um, and the Student Services Building, or SSB, the corner of Racine and Harrison. We're on the third floor. So you can meet with us in person Monday through Friday. You can also meet with us virtually. You also can meet with us over the phone. So you kind of choose how you want to interact with the career advisors in our office. So we do a lot of different things with students. If you are a little bit unsure about maybe what career you want to pursue, you can meet with one of us and we can um, do a career assessment with you, which will give us more information about your interests and your talents, might give us some ideas of careers that might be a good fit. So that's what's called a career assessment. We definitely do resume and cover letter reviews. We also can help students create um, those resumes and cover letters. And Tana is so great. She's putting links about our office in the chat. Um, if you have a job search, an internship search, you need some help with that, we can do that. If you're applying to graduate school, we can help you kind of research graduate programs, help you kind of look, um, edit your personal statement. Um, if you want to make a LinkedIn profile, we do that. If you want to talk more about networking. So 
anything that's related to sort of your the career you want to pursue after college, those are things that we do. Also helping students like look for internships, all that great stuff. And this week, actually, on Thursday, we have a, one of the biggest career fairs on campus. It's called the All Majors Fair. It's Thursday from 1 to 4 at Student Center East in the Illinois room. So that might be a really great event for you to go to um, if you're trying to look for a job or internship. You can find more information about the career, the All Majors Fair on Handshake under the Events tab, and it'll list for you all the employers that are coming. And there's a lot of employers that are coming to the fair on Thursday. Um, also, if you're preparing for an interview, we do mock interviews, help you get ready. We have workshops like this one. And actually, um, we have uh, additional workshops in the class of 2023 series. So we're talking about networking, we're talking about interviewing, we also are going to do something about salary expectations and negotiations. Um, next week, we're also going to, we have, we're starting a financial wellness series. So if you have, you're interested in thinking about um, your credit score, or lots of different financial things, we have some great workshops coming up in April about financial wellness. We're really excited about that. So that's about career services. And like I said, we are in um, SSB on the third floor, Racine and Harrison, and Tan put a great link to the All Majors Fair in the chat, which is super helpful. So career services, I told you where we're located. This is our website. If you want to connect with us, but you're just like a little bit confused or you need some assistance, um, our general email address, careerservices at uic.edu is a good place to start. Um, also, if you haven't set up your Handshake account, that's something we can help you with. We really suggest that. And then... The other career offices on campus, and all these career offices are great. College of Business has one, College of Engineering has one, Liberal Arts and Sciences, and Public Health. So if you're in one of those colleges, we want to make sure you are connecting with those career advisors, and you can meet with them in person or virtually. Um, so that's just a good tip to know um, for sure. Okay. Um, and then Tam posted about the financial wellness series, which it's a new for us, and we're really excited. We have some great speakers coming. All right. So when I present, often I like to use something called Slido. It's just a way to kind of um, encourage interaction. It's nice for you all to see what other students or alums are thinking. So how it works is you go to slido.com, so S-L-I-D-O.com, and then you have to put in our code, which for today's workshop is 4204077, and I can put that in the chat, um, 4204. I think I got that right, seven, seven. <laughs> um, so, um, oh, it's 077, look, see, I made a mistake. So let me fix that. Um, and um, you can participate in the chat or in the, in the Slido. Um, so love to hear what brought you today's workshop. What do you want to learn about today? Clearly I have a bunch of stuff planned, but it's helpful for me to know like, Hey, like, what are some of the things that you all, um, are thinking about? Um, what are some of the things that you want us to talk about? Cause you know, I could maybe do some adjustments and it's always helpful for me to know like what students and what alums are wanting to talk about when we talk about resumes. I'm pretty sure Slido is working because I tested it before, but let me know if Slido is not cooperating with us. Um, we, I can do a little bit of technical work or we can figure out a different way to um, kind of hear what people have to say. So what brought you to today's workshop? What do you want to learn about today? All right. Oops. All right. Apparently a lot of us working. I'm so glad to see that. It usually works, but sometimes it has its own little brain. How to start a resume. What goes on a resume? The do's and don'ts. Okay. How to pass the ATS. Yes. We are going to talk about um, that ATS. Um, sounds like maybe someone is in a, a business class 420 and how to polish your resume, specifically your skills. No idea if you're a first-time resume person. That's great. We're just so happy um, you're here. Got it. All right. Um, anyone else? Any other? Um, any other thoughts that you have about um, about resumes? Anyone else? Anything else? Um. All right. Let's see. Anything else that people are thinking? Best practices. All right. So, um, 
So it looks like some people are typing. So let's give them a little bit of time to finish up. Let's see what, what else people have to say. I'm glad you guys are getting the hang of Slido because we're gonna use it a little bit today. Um, all right. Let's see, anything else that we are missing from anyone else's um, feedback? Hmm. All right. We're going to keep on moving. Um, so I like to have a disclaimer in this workshop because I think sometimes th people think, and I think I thought this, you know, in college, okay, I'm gonna go to this resume workshop and then poof, I'm going to have a great resume. That would be awesome. Um, but it's a process and it's a journey. And that's why I picked this picture, that person with the backpack, because you have to pack your patience and also just know that you can have an awesome resume. Even if you've never had a resume before, absolutely, you can have a great resume, but it's a process. And sometimes it's gonna go through a lot of different edits. You might meet with a career advisor, you might work on your own with it. It's, it's a process and I think it's better to create a quality resume, a high quality resume, right? Then just create one so you have one. We want you to create one that's going to get you an interview, that's hopefully gonna get you an internship or a job. So remember, remind yourself, this is a process and it's a journey and it might take me a while as I'm working through it. So we're gonna use Slido again. I'd love to hear like, what's the purpose of resumes? Like, why do we have them? Sometimes I've had students ask me like, can I just get a job by like, just people know me and like, they know that I'm like a hard worker. Like, why do I have to create a resume? Like, why is this necessary? I feel like it's kind of antiquated. I feel like it's just kind of like old school. Um, why do we need these crazy resumes? So somebody said to see if you're qualified or a good candidate. Okay. Um, showcase your skills and projects. Mm -hmm. Yep. I agree. All this stuff, your skills, right? Some, maybe your potential showcase that experience. Um, yeah, I agree with this. And, you know, sometimes students will ask me like, do I think in five years, like we'll have resumes? Like, I think we probably will. They might look different, you know, like I know some people are starting to make video resumes. So that's kind of becoming a thing, right? So resumes definitely may change and evolve. Um, I don't know if they're like going to go away away. Um, although, you know, I guess anything's possible. But in 2023, you need a resume. You need a resume to apply for a job or an internship. Sometimes for a scholarship, you need a resume. To apply to graduate school, often you need a resume. Um, so even if you hate them, and that's fair, I get it you're going to need one. And we want you to have a wonderful one that's going to land you whatever it is you're applying for. So people have to show credentials, um, credit, you know, applying for jobs, all this good stuff. I agree with everything everyone has said. Thank you for participating. I think that also just makes it a more interesting workshop when we get to hear from a lot of people. And we see that experience is sort of this big, the biggest word. And right, because that I think we all agree that a resume can be helpful to showcase and highlight your experience. So Again, why do we have resumes? So it's a marketing tool, right? Kind of highlighting your relevant qualifications, those skills, experiences, education, and strengths, especially related, right, to a position that you're applying for. And, you know, for, for most positions that you are applying for, you potentially are going to need a resume. Internship, jobs, et cetera. It's really the most common thing that's requested. And the other thing that I think is, like, kind of hard to get our heads around is that reviewers sometimes review resumes very quickly, less than 10 seconds, um, which I know sounds crazy, but we're going to show you how can you organize your resume so it's easy to review, it's organized, and it can really stand out. And then just a couple of other thoughts about resumes. So it's usually the way that someone meets you for the first time, especially like a recruiter or a hiring manager. It's their first impressions. We want you to make a great one. Um, and hopefully, Based on your resume, you'll be able to move to that next step, which oftentimes is an interview. And then, you know, some of you said this in the Slido, a lot of times it helps that reader or the reviewer see, do you meet the qualifications for this position? You know, do we think you'd be a good fit? Do we think, you know, potentially we want to see, um, you know, if we want to interview you, right? So it's just, it's quickly and briefly, it's showcasing those skills, those experiences, those affiliations, those kinds of things. Again, maybe in the future it will change. Right now, this is kind of what we're working with, at least in 2023. 
So I don't know if you guys have seen the movie The Help, but this is kind of a meme from The Help. And I think um, this is true, right? Like we want to be hired. We're wonderful, right? So so hire us. So if you haven't seen the movie, it's and also it's a wonderful book if you haven't read the book. Um, but this is one of the, the child characters in, in The Help. Um, all right. This is my last slide for a while, I promise. Um, what kind of skills, when you started thinking about companies, employers, organizations, what kind of skills do you think they're looking for when they hire new employees? And I'm going to show you some information about this, but I'm curious from your point of view, when employers, companies, orgs, whatever kind of employer they're hiring, what are they looking for when they hire new employees? Okay, we got a lot of communication, lots of votes for written and verbal. I agree with that for sure. Okay, we have a vote for problem solving. Yeah, soft skills could definitely be those communication skills, uh, multitasking. Soft skills could also potentially be like a time management skill. Critical thinking, I think, is really important. Um, and even if you think about the classes you're taking as an undergrad or as a graduate student, a lot of the classes you're taking are helping you, for example, build your critical thinking skills, potentially maybe build some of your communication skills. Um, and if you have a job or an internship or you volunteer, you know, you're also building these skills. And I, everything you guys have said, like, I, I think makes sense. You're building these skills in your courses, in your volunteer work, in your employment, um, those kinds of things. So, yes, these these skills make a lot of sense to me. Ooh, desire to learn new things. Um, I think also sometimes uh, we think about like, taking initiative, right? That could be an important skill or kind of leadership. Okay, so let's see what our friendly slide has to say. Um, so you may not have heard of NACE, um, but NACE stands for the National Associations of Colleges and Employers. So it's kind of an interesting organization because it's made up of people like myself and Tan. So career advisors, career coaches who work with college students and graduate students. It's also made up of recruiters from different um, different organizations, different employers, and they survey the employers a lot because they're saying, hey, we want to make sure that college students, graduate students, that they know when you're hiring, what, you, what kind of career competencies, what kind of career skills are you looking for? And they've surveyed them many different times. Um, so this is kind of the most up-to-date survey we have of what employers are saying, right? And of course, all these skills are important, right? But if you look, um, somebody had said problem-solving skills, analytical skills, right? Some of those quantitative skills. Um, no one really has said a lot about teamwork, but I think teamwork is clearly very important. Um, written communication, taking that initiative, work ethic. So, so it's helpful, I think, for us to, to be aware of what are the skills, what are employers looking for when they're hiring? And then as we're thinking about creating your resume, trying to sort of analyze, like, is your resume showcasing that you have written communication skills? Is your resume showcasing some of the critical thinking skills that you have or your ability to work on a team or your ability to showcase leadership or things like that? So, and, you know, also as you're looking at this list, you might think, okay, like I have a lot of these, but like, I don't have a lot of leadership skills. That's, it's good to know, right? And then you could start thinking about, hmm, maybe like that's a skill that I really want to develop like in my last semester or over the summer or like that's something that I just think would make me a stronger candidate. So I think that's just something to think about. There might be skills on here that you're like, I don't have that skill, which is totally fine. Um, but it also could be good um, for you to think about what else you can develop. So, you know, again, as we're thinking about creating your resume, your skills and your experiences are really important and you're gonna be showcasing that in your resume. So I'd like you to think a little bit about, you know, what makes you a strong candidate when you're applying for jobs and internships? Maybe what skills you bring, uh, maybe you led a project or maybe you're like a go-to person for your friends or your family. Is there certain software you know how to use? Um, so um, yeah, so I'd love for you to like, maybe if we could use the chat, I know we use Slido, but sometimes it's fun to kind of change mediums. If we could use um, the chat, I'd love to kind of hear um, what are some of the, like, what are some of the skills maybe that you have that you're like really proud of? And it doesn't even have to be the skills in the list I showed you before, but it could be. Um, but what are like, what, who are you the go-to person for your friends or family? What are some of your strong selling points? And like specifically thinking about some of these different skills, um, what do you think um, that you that you offer? And I and I know sometimes it feels weird maybe to brag about yourself, but I'm asking, <laughs> right? And that's what a resume is for in a way, um, right? It's, and I think that makes people uncomfortable, but a resume is sort of our way of kind of bragging about the skills and experiences that we have. 
So if you could use the chat, that would be great. So we have copywriter. So social media post. Maya, thanks so much for sharing. That's great to know. That sounds like if we are looking for somebody to be a copywriter, Maya is going to be our person. Um, and we have flexibility and willingness to learn new skills. Rachel, that's really important. And employers are always looking for that. And we want to think about how can we help you showcase that on your resume. Volunteer management and recruitment, absolutely. I feel like when you manage volunteers, it's a lot of being detail-oriented. Um, after action assessor. So like Ruth is thinking about like kind of process improvement. How can you improve something? How can you enhance it for the future? Um and I know sometimes it's it's we can be really good about thinking about what we're not good at, right? But I think sometimes it's great to think about our strengths. Um, oh my gosh, Melissa knows a lot of languages. It uh, sounds like maybe Melissa is a little bit of a linguist and that could potentially, depending on the career, that could be so helpful. So it sounds like maybe Kaylee has some great software skills and also leadership skills. Um, so this is just a good thought exercise for you to just think about what are my strengths and then how can I showcase that on my resume, especially if it's related, right, to the kind of position that you're applying for? So it was, first of all, it was helpful for, for us to get to know who some of the people are here today. It's, it can, we can kind of get to know you based on the skills that, you know, you think you're you're really great at. So thank you for that. Thank you for thinking about that. Um, all right. Um, yes, great participation. So um, we're going to really dive into resumes as we go through today's workshop, but I just wanted to showcase just like very briefly, right? So this is a student's job, you know, and like kind of where they work. And it shows you there's two different bullet points under example one and example two. Um, and they're both good. Like, I think they're both good, right? But I think if you really read closely with the different bullet points, I think you'll find that one of the examples is maybe a little bit stronger. So how you explain your experience really matters. Right. So, you know, I would say that example one's a little stronger because it's just a little bit more specific. It also is showcasing that this person also has great language skills um, and kind of shows this sort of detail oriented piece, especially um, in actually both bullet points. If you read both bullet points, both of them, I think, showcase that sort of being detail oriented, which employers are always looking for. Right. And so it's not that example two is bad. I think example two is how a lot of us start out our resumes. Um, but I think example one's like a, just a little bit stronger. Um, and so um, just something for you to think about, we want you to get that job or internship, um, but how you explain your experience really matters as far as helping the employer understand what you offer and what you bring to them. So just something to think about. Um, and you know, again, example two is not bad. It's just that I think example one is kind of an enhancement, right? Of sort of example two and just really explaining thoroughly what that person, you know, is able to do. There's just something for you to just think about. I, you might hear me say that a lot, how, you're, how you explain your experience really matters. So just one quick pro tip, because I know I'm always trying to figure out ways to make my life easier. Um, so one thing that could be helpful is creating what's called like a main resume. Some people call it a master resume, whatever you want to call it. But basically it's sort of like a record of all your volunteer work, your jobs, internships, et cetera, sort of all in one place. And then as you're customizing resumes, depending on what you're applying for, you can kind of go back to your main resume and sort of kind of copy paste from it. Because um, I think sometimes like people end up with like 10 different resumes. It's sort of confusing. So it's nice to just have one document and it's going to be long <laughs> in your maybe your Google Drive or on your laptop where everything is detailed just in case you need it. So just a suggestion to make what's called a main resume or a master resume where you're kind of listing every single thing that you've done. And then that way you don't have to always have so many different versions of your resume. So just a suggestion. Um, so now we're going to talk about when you create a professional resume. And I know we have some people here that are new to this. We have some people here with more experienced. All is great. Um, but we're going to talk about resources you can use when creating those resumes. Um, so I kind of joke that the job description or the internship description is kind of like the gold mine. Right. And so what we really encourage you to do, and we're actually going to practice doing it today, is analyzing that description and try to figure out sort of what is most important, what that employer is really looking for. So sometimes in job descriptions or internship descriptions, certain words appear over and over. That is sort of like a dead giveaway that like, oh, my gosh, this employer really, really cares about this skill or this employer really, really cares about this kind of experience. Um, so like for me, and you, you might do it differently. I, if I'm applying for a job or an internship, right. I print the, the description out. I'm kind of old school and I'll like highlight and circle 
words and phrases that it seems like appear over and over that they're very interested in. And then when I'm working on my resume, I'm trying to sort of utilize some of that same language so that there's a match. Um, the other way to do this is use, if you Google, like free word cloud generator, there's actually a lot of free word cloud generators out there. You can actually copy the job description. I would leave out information about like the equal opportunity or leave out information about the company culture. I might just like keep the actual, like the bullet points, like the, the requirements, the job description, put it into a word cloud and you can even see which words are appearing over and over because they're going to be bigger. There's also another great tool called job scan that you can use. And I think you can do like five free job scans before you have to pay. So I don't recommend paying, but those five free job scans are pretty nice. Um, and it'll show you from the job description, again, kind of what words are appearing over and over. Um, also on job descriptions, sometimes they have something that says like requirements. And then sometimes they have something that says like preferences. So I would pay most attention to the requirements. Um, so sometimes it'll say requirements, like three to five years of experience. Not always, but often if it says that, that's really what they want. If it's under preferences, that's like kind of a nice to have, but they might still interview if you don't have it. It's tricky though, because sometimes employers say three to five years required, and then they're like, eh, if you have one and two, it's fine. So it's hard because it depends on the employer. But I think sometimes we sometimes people apply to jobs that you just don't have the qualifications for. And a lot of times you're not going to get an interview that way. So just you know, maybe if you meet most of the requirements, I think that that's fine. But if you're if you're meeting like one and there's eight of them, it might be a sign that maybe this job isn't a good fit for you, but maybe trying to apply for something where you meet like more of the requirements, maybe a majority, even if you don't meet all of them. Um, but I think the requirements usually, usually they mean business when it's under requirements, but it can also depend on the employer. Um, and then the other thing I think is good to just be aware of when you are um, yeah, when you are kind of getting your documents ready, it's definitely going in like their social media accounts, going in their website. Sometimes I'll even Google like name of the organization um, plus news and like see if there's been any like news stories about them. Um, but go on the about us section of their website, their mission and values, who their leadership is, what their philosophy is, you know, those kinds of things, just to help you kind of get a sense um, of like who they are, what, what they care about. Um, and, you know, definitely, like Tan said, if you have a question, like, please throw that in the chat. We definitely want to answer it. But what we're going to do next um, is we are going to um, hot off the Internet. I found it actually, I think yesterday or maybe it was this morning. I can't remember. Um, I found a job description that I definitely think um, a recent UIC graduate could apply for. So I'm going to pop that in the chat. Um, I also, on the next slide, you'll see, I also have copied and pasted the job description onto the slide because I feel like some people are on their phones and maybe you can't access the chat. So I'm trying to like appeal to everybody depending on like how you are joining us. Um, but when you look at the job description, I'm gonna give us like, I don't know, a couple minutes. Um, it's two pages, but it's actually not that long. Um, there's a lot of space. Um, so if you are going to apply or an applicant's going to apply, like what should they be emphasizing maybe on their resume and their cover letter if they want to apply for this job? That's what we're trying to answer. So let me go to the next slide. And But it looks kind of crazy on the slide, but I know some people maybe won't be able to see the attachments in the chat. So let me pop the job description in the chat. And this is real. <laughs> I literally pulled it off of the off of the company website. Um, I did kind of like a, you know, like a Google search, um, but then um, also actually went to their website. Um, this is a real job. I actually think it sounds like a cool job, um, but I'm gonna put that in the chat and give you a couple minutes and then we're gonna kind of reconvene. And I'd love to hear, that was apply for this job. Like what are some of the, like skills, experiences that they need to have in order to potentially be qualified. So that way we can think about what we're going to emphasize, right? What are we going to emphasize on those documents if you're going to apply for this job? If you have questions about anything, let me know. Um, but I'm be very curious to hear what you all think after you read the job description.
Okay, so hopefully you've had a chance to look over the job description a little bit. I know this is pretty fast, but um, if you want to use the chat, you want to mute yourself, you want to raise your hand, um, like what, if someone's going to apply for this position, like what are some things you think their resume should be just kind of showcasing, highlighting, just based on your kind of brief review, right, of this, this real full-time job? What do people think? Okay, so Ruth says teamwork. Yes, it's very interesting, Ruth, because I really agree with you about teamwork, but then it's interesting because it like, it sort of like alludes to teamwork, but I feel like, um, yeah, it, it doesn't talk, but it does talk about the brokerage team. I just felt like it's sort of interesting because I feel like it is sort of talk about teamwork, but they don't talk about it extensively, but it seems like you need that teamwork to be successful. Real estate experience, yeah. Social media. Yeah. And interestingly, like they didn't really say exactly which social media, which I thought was interesting, um, but they did mention constant contact twice. So it sounds to me like you really need to know how to use constant contact or be like a crazy fast learner because you're going to use constant contact. Yeah. The organizational skills, I really agree with. It's, there's a couple of bullet points about like keeping an inventory of different things. Um, and I feel like you really need to be organized to keep an inventory of different things. Um, and then we have strong communication skills. Yeah, definitely. I think written in order to write, make those social media posts, constant contact is often like an email newsletter. So kind of for that too. Um, but then maybe communication skills as far as that like teamwork piece goes. Um, so definitely. The other thing that I noticed, and it was kind of buried in the job description, is event planning. And they talked about like conferences, like events. And I feel like when you do event planning, a lot of times you have to be really detail oriented just because there's a lot of moving parts with events. So I, it's like kind of buried in the job description. And, it, you know, marketing associate doesn't really sound like event planning, but they definitely talk about that. Um, and so also the other thing that I noticed is that they talk a couple of times about like marketing campaigns. And so I think it'd be really helpful if the applicant like had experience already sort of maybe leading a marketing campaign. It could be for a student organization. I don't think it has to be for like a full-time job, um, but then you'd want to show like, have you increased followers, right? Have you, um, you know, maybe ran a competition and you got more engagement, but it seems to me like having run a successful marketing campaign previously is something that would maybe set somebody apart for this particular job. Um, I will tell you that I'd never heard of the company. I had to Google the company. I was like, what is this? I'm like, oh, that's kind of interesting. Commercial real estate. And it's like a national company, but they have branches here in the Chicago area. And I think that that also is important. Like sometimes when you find a job description, you never heard of the employer. And yeah, maybe you've never heard of them and they're terrible, but maybe you've never heard of them just because you've never heard of them. And so try not to count like an employer out. Like we're not all going to work for Google. Like Google doesn't have enough jobs for all of us, right? So I think it's important to be open to other employees you've never heard of. Like, of course you wanna do your due diligence. I Googled them, I looked at some reviews. People seem to really like working there. I was like, okay, like sounds, sounds interesting. Could be a place if, if I had these skills that maybe I would apply. Um, so definitely it's okay to Google an employer you haven't heard of and, and try to give them a chance. Um, so what can you do when the job description um, is vague? So yeah, I, it's very frustrating when it's vague because sometimes it's like hard to tell. Um, I think like, so that's a hard problem, I would say, but sometimes I think you can try to like, maybe go on LinkedIn, see if you can find anybody who works at that company. Sometimes not everybody, but some people on LinkedIn will like list some of their responsibilities. So sometimes it like kind of gives you like a better idea of maybe like some of the tasks that people do at that organization. It's not foolproof, but sometimes LinkedIn can be helpful. The other thing too is like, if it's a company you're like, or employer you're like super excited about, you maybe could also try to do some networking, like, especially if it's kind of on your list of employers you're interested in and maybe try to talk with people who work there, like over Zoom or in person or over the phone. Sometimes they may shed light on like more about what the position might do or what the company does. So that sometimes is helpful. Um, the company doesn't really have an online presence. Yes, Raphael, that, sometimes that is true. So again, like LinkedIn, sometimes if you can find people who work there, maybe kind of chat with them a little bit. Um, I also like literally sometimes I'll Google the name of the employer and like news and see if any like news items come up. Um, there's one review on Glassdoor. I know we're news on Google. Even their address is obscure. 
So, I mean, that also could be like a little concerning if it's really hard to find out any information about that company. So, I mean, it could be like a red flag or it could just be that they don't have a big online presence. Um, but again, maybe try to see if you can find someone who works there and, and talk with them a little bit. And that might be a way to kind of help you just get more information about them. But that's a great question. And it can be frustrating, right? When you're researching and you're just like, man, like, what do these people do? So good question. I mean, the other, I guess the other thought is that they're on Handshake. Sometimes on Handshake, not always, but sometimes you can see like the people who work, like you can see the recruiters, like maybe messaging the recruiter. If you have a specific question, if you can figure out who it is, maybe over Handshake, they may be able to answer some questions that you have. That's just like another idea, but these are great questions. So we're going to transition to talking a little bit about applicant tracking systems, or again, people to call them ATSs. Um, has anyone heard of an applicant tracking system? And if you want to use the chat or you want to mute yourself, um, because it's definitely something we want to make sure that you are aware of and you know what these are. Has anyone heard of an applicant tracking system? Does anyone know what they are? Can you enlighten us a little bit? Anyone have thoughts about applicant tracking systems? We're definitely going to talk about them today. I've heard of them. Okay. They're... I mean, my understanding is that there are like, quote unquote, like AI systems that look for certain maybe keywords or something in your resume in order mm -hmm. to pick out resumes that kind of go to be read by humans. Shelby, yes. I think I'm going to let you be the career advisor. I'm impressed that you did a great job of explaining what an ATS is. So, um, it definitely is sort of like an algorithm, right? And like you said, they kind of, uh, and, and the, we have a comment in the chat from Kaylee as well. So they're right, kind of looking at the job description or the internship description, and they're trying to see, do your resume and cover letter, is there a match between the words in that, that description and the documents that you're submitting? And, and like Kaylee said, they are looking generally for like a percentage match. Um, so that's why um, I'm pretty passionate about reading those descriptions really carefully, highlighting, underlining, whatever you need to do to just really help you focus um, on what you want to be including in your resume and your cover letter. Um, I have this like real little monster looking guy because sometimes people feel like an ATS is kind of like a monster. But the thing about an ATS is like, yes, it can be frustrating because the algorithm kind of reviews it first. If it's a match and they're looking again for a higher match, then a human, right, will actually review your, your documents. Um, but, you know, and if once a human gets your documents, if it, if it makes it past the algorithm, like the recruiters might spend a lot of time on your resume. So it's, it's not like it's 10 seconds and that's it. If it makes a match, they're, they're usually pretty interested. But we want to make sure that it makes a match. Um, and the other thing about an ATS is like, you know, if you get called for an interview, if you get hired for the job, the ATS also sort of starts forming like your file at the company. So that's where eventually like your demographic information goes and like your address is going to go. So part of the ATS is absolutely about applicants and resumes and cover letters, but there's other things that employers use the ATS for. Um, so it's not just about resumes and cover letters. It's sort of part of the company's like human resources system oftentimes. And in the recruiter's defense, you know, they, they do get a lot of resumes and cover letters. And so if you're a recruiter and you have a thousand resumes and cover letters for two jobs, it can be hard to sift through a thousand resumes and cover letters. So they use the ATS just to help make their life a little bit easier. Um, although, you know, it can be frustrating, right? When you, you know, it's like, oh, I have to make it past the ATS. But the thing is, you can do it. Absolutely. So definitely read those descriptions carefully. Try to tailor your job descriptions, or I'm sorry, your resumes and cover letters. And even like if your resume, for example, talks a lot about group work, but you're reading the, the job description and it talks about teamwork. Okay, well, like that's pretty easy. Go into your resume, change all of the group work into teamwork. So sometimes like you might call something one thing, the employer calls it something else. Literally just go to like find and change the words. Um, the other thing that we... Um, uh, let's see. Um, somebody asked if you're applying for like a, it sounds like maybe a professor job. They probably do use ATSs. I think ATSs are generally used by, I would say like medium to large size organizations. Like UIC for sure uses an ATS. Maybe the really small startup-y ones, maybe not as much, but even those places I think are starting to use an ATS, like just to help them kind of go through their documents. Um, but don't use a template. I know if you Google 
my, you know, resume template on Google, on Microsoft Word, et cetera. There's a million templates. But the thing is, ATSs struggle to read the templates because they often have columns, tables, text box, headers, footers, graphics. Do not use a template because oftentimes they will not make it past the ATS. We recommend um, like a blank Google Doc, a blank Word Doc, and then you can kind of go from there. Also, sometimes ATSs read um, reads acronyms. Sometimes they read sort of like full phrases. Um, so um, yeah, so just make sure you're using both. So that way, depending on what the ATS is using, right, you are going to make a pass. Definitely use black font unless you're in like a very design oriented field. But besides like graphic design, architecture, et cetera, like generally we recommend black font. Submit in PDF if you can. And then the best way, honestly, the best way to get past an ATS is also to develop a good network because sometimes you can email like your resume like to a contact at the organization. Sometimes they'll pass it on to a manager. Um, so that's why it's great for you to be thinking about, you know, are there five organizations or 10 organizations or whatever that I'm really excited about and really try to, um, you know, like really try to figure out like folks who work there. And then that way your networking can sort of sometimes help you with that. You can do it for sure, but it, it definitely takes some time. Um, so thanks for all those great um, questions. So um, like I said, you guys are actually have a chance to review some resumes. So I'm going to show you um, two resumes, but one at a time. And I'd love to hear just like, what do you think about each resume? Are they easy to read? Do you think they're professional? Do you think this person might get an interview? Just like things you notice. And the other reason that I think it's important you know, for um, for you to get a chance to review resumes is at some point in your life, if this hasn't happened already, you're going to review resumes. At some point, you might be a hiring manager and you are going to have to get used to how to do this. So I think it's good to actually get some practice. What is it like to look at two very different resumes? So this is the first one. Uh, oops, our friend Jose. Um, and I'm actually going to also put it in the chat. I do have it um, on the slide, but some people may want it as an attachment. So um, I'm putting Jose also in the chat, but Jose is also on the slide. And I'll give you a couple minutes to look over Jose. Um, this is not the worst resume at all, but also it's like the, not the best example. And I wanna hear a little bit about like what you all think about this. And then we'll look at another resume. All right, um, feel free if you're still reviewing, that's great, um, but feel free to kind of pop in the chat or if you wanna meet yourself, either way. Love to hear um, what do you think about Jose's resume? Um, what maybe makes it not like the greatest example, not terrible at all, but it potentially could be better. Okay, so Kaylee is being very detail-oriented is noticing that there are some grammatical issues, which I agree with for sure. And that is such an easy mistake. All of us have made that mistake on resumes. So if it's a past experience, you wanna make sure that the verbs are in the past tense. If it's a, a current experience, the verbs should be in the present tense. Um, um, and Tan also has some great advice. Like if it's ever like a job, if you think the company is a scam, especially if it's on Handshake, let us know. And because um, we don't want any students or any alums to, you know, be potentially looking at jobs, that might be a scam. Um, other things that you're noticing about Jose's resume, maybe makes it like the greatest example. What do you think about kind of like the white space, right, versus like where the text is? What do you think about that? Bullet points and volunteer experiences. Yeah, right? Like it's weird because it's like there's not a ton 
um, like of, of bullet points. Also, did you notice that it says volunteer experience or leadership? I think I think Jose should say what it is versus kind of have like an option. Um, what else? What else are you noticing about this resume that maybe makes it like not, or maybe there's things you like about it and that's okay to share too. Um, what else are you noticing though? Anyone else have thoughts about this particular resume? We're gonna look at another one, but I'd love to hear what you think about this. I've seen this resume working with students and alums. Um, yeah, so I agree with Kaylee, like the skill piece is like very vague, like exactly what kind of skills. I think the skill section, I always suggest like really organizing the skill section and the next resume we look at has, I think a better, a more organized skill section. Um, yeah, so Raphael's like, it's not very formal. I agree, it's kind of more casual. I think, first of all, it's a template. Um, right. So I took this from Word. I just literally searched resume template. And it was like, I don't know, one of the first ones that popped up. So generally don't use a template because again, when you we upload this to an ATS, it oftentimes will kind of knock the text around. Also, generally, unless you're a designer, we generally don't, we recommend more like black font. Um, I think also like the sort of JP, like the top part is taking up a lot of space. Um, the other thing is, I don't know where to look, right? Should I be looking at the objective and the skills or should I be looking at the experience and the education? My, my eyes are kind of competing because I, I have two different columns. So that's, we don't recommend a double column resume because I think it's hard to figure out what to look at. We also generally don't recommend objectives. I would say five years ago or 10 years ago, generally that was much more common. So now people either don't have something like that or they may have something that's called a profile because an objective is more telling the employer what you want. And we think employers are more focused on what they're looking for. How can you be an asset to them? So generally we don't recommend objectives. I think the education section probably should be a little bit higher, especially if you're in school or about to graduate. Your education generally should be higher than your experience, as you get more experience, sometimes your education kind of moves down. But when you're a current college student or recent grad or even graduate student, the education sometimes should be a little bit higher. Okay, so thanks for looking at Jose's resume. So we have another resume. Um, this is Miguel. Um, and so this is a little bit of a different way of organizing a resume. I will again put this resume in the chat in case sometimes people like to have it um, as an attachment. Um, and also Miguel's resume, just so you know, is um, off of our website. We have updated our student, the student section in resumes. We have a slew of new um, sample resumes. So Miguel is from that. Um, so same thing, like I think this is a little bit of a stronger resume and we're gonna talk more about that together. What makes Miguel's resume a little bit stronger and then we're gonna kind of keep on trucking. So thank you guys for looking at these resumes and thank you just for all of your input. Okay. Um, and Tian, so great. She put the link into the student section. So thank you, Tian. Um, so Jennifer is asking, um, what if you're a non-traditional student and have more work experience in education? So that's a great question. So in that case, maybe it would make sense to put your experience first if you have maybe more, if the thing is, is your experience relevant? If your experience is relevant to what you're applying for, then maybe your experience should go first. Um, if it's not as relevant, I maybe will put your education section first. Um, but that is a great question. And definitely sometimes if you have a lot of relevant work experience or experience, then maybe it should go first and your education can be kind of tucked underneath. Thank you for asking that question. Um, and then Ruth says better flow relevant information. Yes, I agree. It's, it's I think, kind of easier to see, right, kind of what this person's looking for and, and the experience is definitely more relevant. Um, other things that people are noticing, and it's okay if you, there's things you don't like on, on Miguel's resume, we can talk about that too. Um, but I'm curious, like, what are things you're noticing about this particular resume? And if you're still looking through it, um, that's fine. I think, um, sometimes we, I give short amounts of time just because I also think that's kind of what recruiters do, but, it's a lot. Miguel has a lot. Miguel has a lot of information to share. Anything else you're noticing or questions you have, et cetera? Okay. 
I have a question about absolutely um, bullet points. Do you suggest putting periods at the end of the sentences? Yeah. So Shelby, thanks for asking the question. So that actually is like sort your discretion. And so generally what we say is either every single one should have a, a period at the end or none of them should have a period at the end. It's like, you just want to be consistent because technically they're not actually sentences, but they're really close <laughs> to sentences. So yeah, you can choose, but just try to be consistent however you decide to do it. Because one of the things I did learn recently, I'll just like caveat this note, that if you're using screen reading technology, if you don't have mm -hmm. a period, it just flows into the next one. Sometimes. Interesting. Hmm. So that, so, like, I started hmm. putting, like, I didn't have periods, but then I started uh -huh. putting them in because of that. But I didn't know if point. that, like, was a... Like, I haven't heard that, but that makes a lot of sense because sometimes, right, different people are using screen reading. And, and so maybe that's something to, for us to think about. Maybe periods would be more helpful. Yeah, thank you for that. That's a great mm -hmm. question. Um, or sorry, great comment, I should say. Um, other people, like things you're noticing. Um, I have a whole long list of, of things that about Miguel's resume, but I want to hear from you all. Like, what are things you're noticing? Maybe something you have a question about, or right, we looked at two, we looked at two different resumes, right? I'm kind of curious, like what are things that are standing out to you about the second resume that we're looking at? Okay, it's a lot of information. That's from Rachel. It is. It's a lot of information. Um, it highlights a lot of experiences employers would see as beneficial. Yeah, I, I think this resume does like a better job of sort of highlighting the relevant information. Very detailed, action oriented. That's from Ruth. Um, you know, one thing I, I really like about this particular resume is that it has a course project section. Um, so, what course projects go before experience? Good question, Shelby. I think it just kind of um, depends. Good point. We, we're going to have to fix that for course projects. Thanks for that tip. Um, so it depends. You know, I think if the course projects are very relevant to what the person's applying for, I think it's fine for it to go before the experience. Um, so they've actually done some studies with recruiters, right? And so they've actually have recruiters wear heat sensing glasses when they review resumes because they're trying to figure out like where do the recruiter's eyes go first. And what they found is that recruiters spend most of their time on a resume, especially at the beginning, but most of their time at the top part of a resume. So if you literally took a piece of paper, right, and fold it in half, they spend most of their time on the top half of that piece of paper. So I always just think about that top half of a resume is really important real estate. So anything that's very relevant, anything that's very impressive is something that you, um, right, but you really want to um, right, but you really want to just make sure that anything in that top half is something that is relevant, they're excited about, et cetera. So thank you. Well, I'll have to check the two different versions and, and about like whether or not the course project is underlined. Um, that's a helpful tip. The other thing about this resume is that the skill section is very detailed, and I recommend that just to make it easier for that reader. Um, you know, the other thing is this, this resume happens to have a professional um, profile and so not requirement, but it's kind of a nice to have. I think it kind of showcases the employer what this person is offering, kind of where they're going, those kinds of things. I think a profile should be very short. Some people's profiles are like a paragraph. I, sometimes I think that's a little bit too long unless you just have like a ton, a ton of experience. Um, but I kind of joke that a profile is kind of like a tweet. So it doesn't have to be 180 characters, but it should be short. It should be very concise and really showcasing like the most impressive skills and accomplishments. The other thing is this person's resume, right, has different kinds of experience sections. So you can put all the experience together if you prefer. Um, this person happened to put professional experience and then the experience that they have that's not as relevant, they kind of pushed it down right towards more of the bottom of the resume and they called it additional experience. So you can just put it all in one experience section if you want. But also this kind of gives you a way to showcase more of like things that are more relevant first. And then, you know, but you also can, you can do it in a different way. There's just showing you there's different ways to organize resumes. Um, and I do think this one is pretty easy to review. It is a lot of information, um, but it is, a, it's, it's organized and, and hopefully pretty easy for someone to review. Um, the other thing is if you went to a community college first, this is how you would do it. You put your most recent university first, like UIC's first, and then this person studied abroad, but then your community college or the first college would go underneath. 
And so that's true for the whole resume. Resumes are what's called reverse chronological. Generally within the section, it's most current to least current. So just something for you to think about when you're organizing your resume. Um, okay. So we're gonna keep on trucking. Um, thank you for all your participation. So we looked at two different resumes. We've already talked a bunch about organizing resumes and things like that. Anything that just like stands out to you from looking at these two resumes, anything that's just, you know, kind of percolating in your brain, I think it's helpful for us to just hear from each other. Um, anything that's standing out to you, we've looked at two different resumes. We've kind of chatted about them a little bit. What, anything that's standing out to you before we keep on talking about how to format resumes? Anything that's standing out to you? as we keep on moving. Anything that's standing out to you from looking at the two different resumes? It could be from other things we talked about too, if there's anything that's standing out to you. Okay, so we have one comment, shorten my resume. Yeah, it's a good point. I think it depends. I think generally for most undergrads, we recommend one page. Um, graduate students, your resume could be a little bit longer, or maybe more of like a two-page resume, but I have, you know, I don't know, 15 plus years of work experience and I have a two-page resume. I could have a four-page resume, but I eliminate things that aren't as relevant, maybe something that's a little bit older. Um, I, I do think brevity is important unless you're applying to be like a professor, like certain jobs sometimes accept longer documents, but generally most employers, I would say for undergrads, generally are looking for a one-pager, generally. Um, organization really matters, and I think it impacts how that reviewer reads your resume, and the details piece is important too. Um, so thank you for that. Um, anyone else? Anything else that you're just like, yeah, like this was interesting. Simpler styling, right? There's different ways to style for sure. Um, anyone else? Anything else that's standing out to you? Straight to the point, I, th I think is important and really asking yourself, is this relevant? Is this relevant to the job that I'm applying for? If it's relevant, I'm going to include it. Maybe it's not relevant. Maybe I'll keep it off the resume potentially. So those are definitely some like really good points as well. Um, all right. Anyone else and anything else you want to add as you're kind of looking at these two resumes and thinking about the two different resumes? Um, organization. Yeah, that structure and organization really can make a big impact when someone's reviewing your resume. All right. So here we have some resume dues. We already talked about kind of the one page piece. Um, generally, um, we recommend for your headers, like you can underline them, you can bold them, you can put them in all capitals, just to really make the, the header stand out. And by headers, I mean like education, um, work experience, skills, volunteer experience, those kinds of things. Make those easy to find. We recommend numbers, if you can, to quantify your accomplishments. So increase social media followers by 35% through online competitions and quizzes. So that position we looked at earlier, right, that would be a great bullet point for that marketing associate position, just because there's some social media um, relevance, right? So white space is important. You want to have make sure that document's easy to read, recommended margin like 0.5 to 1, um, font should be no smaller than 10 and your name should be bigger. So names are usually like 14 to 16 point somewhere, but the rest of the font, it could be 10, it could be 10.5, it could be 11, 12. Um, definitely do that proofreading. Um, again, we talked about that kind of black font piece, unless it's more design oriented. Um, and then some don'ts. So we talked about not using a template, start with the blank Google Doc or Microsoft Word document. We want you to be truthful on your resume. Um, also, it's okay to look at someone else's resume, get some ideas, get some inspiration, but don't copy from someone else's resume. It needs to be from you. Um, and then no images. So like not your picture, not a cartoon, um, no images on your resume. Um, again, unless it's more design oriented than, than maybe, but generally no. Um, don't include like your citizenship status, um, your religion, your race, your parents' names, religion. All of that stuff should not be on your resume. In other countries, that's very acceptable and it's recommended, but not in the US. Um, also, once you become like a high school, I'm sorry, college sophomore, we recommend taking your high school information off. Like you don't need to put high school diploma on your resume if you're about to graduate from college, because they're going to assume you have a GED or a diploma from high school if you're about to graduate from college. So just kind of FYI on that stuff. And if you have questions or comments as we're going through this, like please feel free, continue to use the chat. You can unmute yourself also. Um, so these are the sections you do have to have on your resume. These, are, I would say, are kind of the requirements. Um, the other things can be optional, but you need to have a contact section. 
And I would recommend generally your resume should probably be organized in this order, contact information, education, skills, experience, unless as somebody already brought up, if you have a lot of relevant experience, then maybe your experience should go higher. Um, but for your contact information, just the city and state, the phone number and the email address, we don't recommend putting your full on address or your zip code. I just think people can make judgments about people based on where they perceive them to live. City and state is more than enough. I'm on the resume, education, um, your name of the school, the location, the degree, the month and year you expect to graduate. You don't have to say when you started the school, you have to say when you expect to graduate. Um, GPA, if it's 3.0 uh, or above, goes on the resume. If not, we recommend leaving it off. Um, definitely organize that skills section just to make it easier to read. Generally recommend not at the bottom of the resume because that potentially could get missed. Um, so we generally recommend higher up. And then you could put volunteer experience, it could be work experience, you kind of decide, right, what kind of experience you want to include, but these four sections are, are pretty universal on resumes. If you have questions about any of this, um, let me know. Um, and then the optional sections. And again, this really depends on you or the experience, your experience. So we, we saw an example of a profile, a summary is really the same thing. It usually goes at the top of a resume. Some people will have relevant academic projects. I think the resume we looked at had course projects. Um, you could have a leadership experience section. You could have a volunteer section, campus involvement. Everyone is different, right? So these are just some ideas that sometimes people have, but I find that sometimes students leave off the academic projects part Academic projects could be a paper that you wrote that you're really proud of. It could be um, a group project that you worked on. So relevant academic projects would be a lot of different things. And then you write some bullet points to further explain that. Um, so I'm going to, we're going to kind of keep on cruising. We have a couple more things to do. Um, so this is just an example from a resume, from an experience section in a resume. Um, and this person um, actually, right, did a lot of work at Domino's, right? Or they do a lot of work. Um, just to show you, it's the name of the employer, it's the location, they have their job title, they have the months and the years, and then they have four, I think, pretty detailed bullet points, right, about what they what they do at that position. Um, so they have an action verb to begin with. Some of these actually have numbers to help you kind of get a sense of the context. Um, and they also really explain like the purpose of, of what they're doing, right, in this particular job. I think sometimes students think that if it's retail or it's service industry, it's not relevant, but it all depends on how you explain those experiences. And, and this is explained in a really professional, organized manner. Um, so it's really all about how, how you explain it matters, right? As I said before. So we really recommend using action verbs. So these are just some examples. If you Google, you know, action verbs for resumes, there's a whole long list. Um, but you want to try to be specific with those action verbs. And remember, if they're past, if it's in the past, they should be past tense. Um, and these are some verbs we don't recommend, the passive verbs like responsible for, work, help. Like there's just, you want to try to include um, stronger verbs if you can that are more action oriented. So here are some accomplishment statements. And this kind of shows you the formula, right, for how you can write impressive um, accomplishment statements for your resume. So your action verb, how or what you do or what you did, kind of the so what the purpose, and then try to provide numbers if you can, right? So this kind of shows you, um, right, sort of just like some different examples um, of how someone was able to just write really strong bullet points. Um, so take a minute to look through those. And we actually have a few minutes, not a time, but we have a few minutes um, to see, it'd be great if, if you can try to maybe take a minute or two, can you write like a strong bullet point that you potentially could use on your own resume? Just one following this formula, an action verb, how or what you do or what you did and kind of that purpose. If you can provide numbers, that would be awesome because this is going to help you write, um, strong accomplishment statements for your resume. And I love, you could pop them in the chat because um, we're we have a couple very small little things to do, but um, we're about to move into a question and answer. I'm going to give you the survey link. Um, so I'd love to just see if we can try to kind of practice writing just one accomplishment statement. Um, and Tan had some great points in the chat just about like kind of from phrases to stay away from that just aren't very action oriented. Um, but I'd love to see. If folks, um, if you can practice kind of really writing a strong bullet point, I think it helps. And I'm happy to give you some feedback on it, or just I think it helps to kind of get some practice.
Anybody want to do a practice and try to write a bullet point? Oops. Um, so if anyone wants to try, that would be great. Um, I think it's helpful to just kind of practice. Um, so sorry about that. Got a little, my computer got a little excited. Oops, here we go. Um, here we go. So here's this last one. All right. We have some brave souls here in the chat. Thank you for being brave. Um, from Ruth, manage and coordinate with 12 to 16 team members via in-person phone and text messaging. Ruth, that's great. I think um, the only thing I might say is I might do something like 12 and choose like the plus sign or something. Like, I think it just sort of makes it, oops. I think it just makes it like, just like a little bit um, easier to read, I feel like. So um, just as a thought. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Um, yes, but thank you for putting one in the chat. Anyone else, any other brave souls out there? I know sometimes it can feel kind of intimidating, but it's great to get feedback, right, about what you're putting together. Um, anyone else want to practice writing a bullet point and put it in the chat? All right, so we have another, Maya has one. Search across social media platforms and find and report current, yeah. I love that, um, Maya, I think that's great. Maybe if you had space, I think you'll have to see. You could like in parentheses after across social media platforms, like in parentheses, you could put like, I don't know, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, you know, if you wanted to be more specific about which ones you're using, um, but that's great. So look at that, see, you guys are pretty good at this. This is great. Um, so it takes practice. And of course, that's what we're here for. We're here to help, but you can do this too, especially as you kind of work on this on your own. Um, so I don't know if you guys like Grey's Anatomy, but I just thought this was funny. And right, as we update our resume, we're getting excited. Please pick us, et cetera. Please proofread your resume. We're happy to meet with you, um, kind of look things over, give you feedback, et cetera. Um, and then, um, so I am gonna stop sharing. Um, and then I will turn my camera on and um, yeah, I'll stop sharing and put the survey link in the chat. Um, and let me just grab that survey link, but I'd love to hear um, questions you have, just anything else you want us to talk about, right? As we're kind of wrapping up for today. Anything else I can help with, questions you have as I... Um, throw the survey link in the chat. And I know surveys are annoying. I'm sorry in advance, but also <laughs> your feedback really helps us know what you like, what you didn't like. How can we make this better for you in the future? Um, so please take like two minutes. It's literally 30 seconds. I've timed myself. <laughs> it actually is not that long. Um, so would love to hear your feedback, things you liked, things you hated, and it'll help us improve for the future, but other just like questions people have, things we didn't get to, um, anything else I can help with as we're, as we're kind of wrapping ourselves up for today. Anything else? The, the one thing I'll tell you is that when we email you, and it'll probably be in a day or two, I will also send you directions. If you want to make a career advising appointment via Handshake, that's what Career Services uses. I will send you directions how to make a career advising appointment. So that way, if you don't know how to do that, you'll know how to do that after you get that email. Um, anything else I can help with? Questions? I hope I haven't stunned you into silence. 
um, let, let us know if, if you have questions or anything else we can help with today. Um, yes, absolutely. You can totally get the slides. Again, we will send out a link to the recording um, if you want to watch through anything and a link and I will, will attach the slides. Um, so yeah, uh, and also how to make an appointment. Um, so you definitely get those kinds of resources, like any other questions or anything else people are thinking about as we're wrapping up for today. Anything else we can help with or concern, a question, anything else? And thank you for the thank yous. It's, it's been my pleasure. It's always a good topic. We get lots of questions about resumes. Yes, and like Tan said, we appreciate you doing the survey. I'm sorry, I know like we're all over surveyed, but the survey helps us know, should we do this topic again? Do you want us to present on something different? Your feedback matters and your feedback helps us figure out how to adjust our, our workshops and our events going forward. Anything else? Anything else that we can answer questions about? Anything else we can help with as we're wrapping up on this Tuesday afternoon? Other questions or things you want to chat about that we didn't get a chance to chat about today? You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm glad it was informative. There's a lot, there's a lot to think about with making resumes, as Tan and I can tell you. And we're always learning like about how how to, you know, information that we can do to improve resumes. Yeah, absolutely. And like, thank you for participating. It was really great. Even though I we didn't get to see everybody, thank you for using the chat. Thank you for muting yourself and asking really great questions and making great comments along the way.